So uh, fine art is one of the largest asset classes in the world. Um, but master class is not about art, right? Or what, what do you mean? Sorry, uh, master works. Okay, so Ma gotcha. master works is a website where you can purchase pieces of a Basquiat or a Pablo Picasso in the same way that you buy stock in uh, publicly in the publicly mar traded markets. So, but art, fine art, is a massive, massive asset class, but it's incredibly illiquid. As in, you you either have to have thirty million to buy a Basquiat, or you don't get any upside. Right. And so what Masterworks is doing is allowing people to purchase it with a minimum, I think, of $1,000. And what I learned meeting with those guys was how, how great that, 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 uh, that as an asset class, how great it could be. So, for example, David Geffen um, from Geffen Records, a, a big entrepreneur, uh, during the financial crisis, he was famous for saying that his uh, fine art went up 30% while his normal uh, – equities went down significantly um um let me see what else i have a bunch of stats here that's, uh, so i think i think i think that's really interesting if i wanted to look at how this company could do i would look at etsy so as etsy has traded at, at a 50 to 80 price to earnings ratio which is really really good mm -hmm. um i would uh, ebay right now is is in the gutter but i'm really i think that marketplaces can be quite large and i think that I personally was shocked at how large, um, fine like fancy art is. And I thought it was like right. there, I thought that there was only like a couple paintings sold a year that made a difference. And in reality, it's not. It's not that way. So, what's your takeaway? Are you uh... okay? Okay. So let me let me explain a little more about art res from, from what we know. So here's what here's what they say. Um, the value proposition is that you can buy fine art in installments. So you were saying Masterworks lets you buy a piece of a of a piece of uh, of art. They sort of fractionalize it these guys say it's yours but you can you're on a monthly payment plan this has been a big trend in e-commerce anybody who's been paying attention to a firm or afterpay these are multi-billion dollar companies that are just saying even low priced items right here's a 40 dollar item but you can buy it in four easy installments of, of 10 bucks and each. a firm is doing quite well both of those companies are going to go public or yeah. it, it's looking like they will Right, Afterpay is actually already public, and Affirm is, I think, going to go public. And so there, and there's, there's more Sezzle. There's, there's others that are doing this too. So that's a very good business um, to be in, I believe. And so, so that's what these guys are doing. They say they've sold thirty six thousand dollars worth of art in three weeks. This is uh, unlike Affirm and unlike Afterpay. They're not a payment option on other market other websites. They are their own marketplace. And so what they're trying to do is they give artists the ability to sell their work. They say most artists don't even sell their work. So they say, list it here. We offer people the ability to buy in installments so more people can buy. So we have more buyers in our pool. And um, they, they get the artist to put their link to their store, just like an Etsy store, in their bio. So they put their art in res link at the bio, and that's driving a lot of users because these are you know Instagram artists or artists with an Instagram who have you know 100,000 followers. And they're getting into the bio of all these different uh, artists. And that's going to drive traffic. That's a lot how SoundCloud grew early on was going for these independent artists and then saying, cool, we'll give you an easy way to host your artwork, in that case, music. Uh, but, you know, here, share your SoundCloud profile. And that's how they got tons of traffic and built up their marketplace. And so I think that's what these guys are trying to do. I think this is smart. Um, the art market is one of those markets that's bigger than you think because you don't even you don't even learn about it till you're already rich. And once you're already rich, you don't do, start a company in it. And um, so I think it's one of those big invisible markets uh, to most entrepreneurs who are scrappy and don't own, you know, like a pencil, let alone a piece of art. I uh, so I would have agreed with you. And before you start talking, I I agreed that it was great. But then you, the way you described it, if OK, so I would I would be against it. If if Etsy is competent, they can destroy these guys. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, I, I think it's going to be hard though because Etsy's niche is handmade crafts, and I think that's just fundamentally different than fine art. I think when you, it's like putting a bottle of wine next to a Budweiser, right, in the, in the aisle. It's it's a little bit. I, I don't think the people who want their art to be sold or fine art to be sold uh, or want to buy want to be next to somebody who's making bracelets. That would be my that'd be my bear case against that. Okay, I buy that. I buy that, but. Oh, okay. I get it. So I see a painting on here. It's three thousand dollars. I can pay over time for for twenty four months for one hundred and thirty seven dollars. Okay. So my question is this: Is this 
pay over time feature even that unique enough to build most of your company on top of? Why not just like have a normal art store and just un install a firm? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know why they're not just using one of the existing <laughs> installment plans. Uh, in, why are they why, why are they owning that piece of it? It's like an art marketplace, but then also this financing program when they could just use one of the existing financing programs. So I'm looking at it now. Um, yeah, I, I'm changing my mind. It's stupid. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Jury's out on, on Art and Res. I'm not an expert in this area, but my well, hunch is bet? that there's something there. My bet would be... I think marketplaces are really, really freaking hard to start, and um, and so I, for that reason, I think that it's going to be incredibly difficult. And they de they definitely haven't shown that they've done that yet. But um, you know, so I would say odds are always against any marketplace being successful. But I do like the fundamentals of what they're trying to do. I don't think this is a stupid. I don't think this is a stupid bet to take if you're an entrepreneur. But I do think still likelihood is that it doesn't work like most startups. I think that. It Okay, but there's a difference here of working and just building wealth and then working by raising money. No, I mean the business working, not, not the raising money. I, lots of companies can raise money. Um, yeah, but what I mean is should I think this it for, sure, it, it for sure can make a living for the owners. The question is, is if they raise money, then will it work or will it not? No. My prediction is if they raise money, it's going to fail. <laughs> I feel like that's your prediction with most things. I think you just don't like when people raise money for the most part. No. The next one that we're going to talk about, Carrot, I think that could work. Okay. All right. Let's talk about it. Okay. So, uh,